<sighs> it's Friday, and this is Unlimited Runtime, episode one, the only podcast part of the Limited Run numbered collection. I am your host, John Smith, and yes, I assure you, that's my name. And next to me are my beloved, benign, and best co-hosts, Eleanor. I'm Eleanor. That. That's me. Good job. Man. <laughs> Stellar start. Every time. Every time. Nathan? Coming to you live on the World Wide Web. I hate this. <laughs> and the internet's very own, Jared Petty. Doki Doki. And I'd like to uh, point out that I'm not benign. I'm cancerous, uh, John. I'm actually, uh, yeah. I'm actually a, a living plague upon humanity. Uh, I devour all those yeah. around me. Suck the life out of them. Uh, just as I uh, am sucking the life out of this table now. So the show has begun, ladies and gentlemen. Thank Welcome you. back to the Jackass Circus. Let's go. Yeah. Thank you for enjoying your favorite tumor-based podcast. Um, how's everybody doing today besides my- being a plague on humanity? Uh, well, my TV died. Oh. Uh, so oh. that's where I'm at. Uh, R.I.P. Yeah, it died. We hauled My it condolences. Up. Yeah, it was a really nice TV. So was it actually- your fault? Uh, no, no. It's simply a motherboard failure. Uh, no. And we actually hauled it off to the TV repair person because it was such a nice TV that we didn't want to give up on it immediately and just replace it. And they had to take it out back behind the TV stables and shoot it. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's gone. So I've gone from my beautiful, delightful, ultra 7000K TV uh-huh. down to my old 720 uh, PhD in my living room. No. While, okay. uh, no, no here's TV here's the question. Here's what. Listen. People will tell you it's not the size that matters. But, Jared, what are, what are we looking at for the new TV? Uh, for the new TV? <laughs> so this is the thing. My wife is the TV shopper in our house. Um, okay. I actually don't care much about having a large television. I grew up largely on PC gaming and CRT gaming. So I tend to get a smaller TV, get up close to it, and game. Uh, that's how I mostly play when I like over but the office. But have you ever experienced... But- a wall TV. <laughs> oh, yeah. I've experienced them. And in the living room, I like to have a big TV because I have very poor vision. And so having a large TV, if I'm going to play games in the living room, is, is a necessity. Right. So I think we're looking at a pretty big new television. Um, it's going to be a price-performance struggle. My wife will ignore price, and I uh-huh. will ignore performance. And then no. she will win, and no. we will buy uh, a large I'm, I'm getting a television. note. Hold on. Um, I'm getting a note from our producer, Joe. That's a, no performance, Matt. Get a good TV. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Please get a good TV. It's worth it. Okay, get a good TV. Get a good. I, just, I, just don't get a smart TV. That's that's no, what I've okay. No, I no you ever, don't, don't. They're don't all do smart. It. They're My all. TVs are you smart can't. Now, you but can't. But not in that way. But you plug your own Chromecast into it. Right. Like, don't run anything through the. That's what I've learned because okay. my Samsung is trying to take over my living room, and I'm not a fan of it. Hey, mine. I also. They're not. Hey, Samsung. If you're watching, I'll take your money. But I also have a Samsung. And let me tell you, Netflix, YouTube does load faster on that TV than it does on any of my consoles. Hey, but YouTube TV does not work very well because you can't rewind. It doesn't have the RAM for it. Well, your first mistake was using YouTube yeah, TV. That's... Hey, you know what? No. You know what? No. No. Maybe, maybe I want to stream things. Uh, you, and that, we are on YouTube, by the way. So. Yeah. Hey, but, YouTube. If, hey, YouTube. Uh, if you have some money. Hey, YouTube. I'll take it. YouTube, Hook this fine. guy up. I like YouTube. <laughs> But I YouTube TV on, I will, on Samsung. I will sell out for absolutely pennies on the dollar. It's <laughs> a real nice thing. What am I playing? Yeah, I, what are you playing? Like, man, I it's okay. So I'm like, we'll get to this later. I'm still neck deep in Baldur's Gate. Of as, course. As people of are. Of course. Um, as is tradition. Aren't we all? But, 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 uh, I being a fan of uh, the one cyberpunk genre, um, have been yanked back into uh, cyberpunk 2077 because uh, they put Idris Elba in it. Automatic uh, self. You talk right about now. a cyberhunk. I mean, come on. Mm-hmm. No. Right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. No. Idris no. Yeah. No. Here's the thing. Attractive, yes. Cyberhunk, TM, TM, TM. No. <laughs> Never. Mm-hmm. Um, but no, so I'm, I'm back. Marketing? No, stop. Let me. I'm talking about a good game and not your bad idea. Um, no, I, so I've been playing. I restarted Cyberpunk. I uh, started a whole new playthrough because they were like, hey, we've changed the game so much since launch uh, that it's basically not the same game. We're calling it a 2.0. They're calling it something. And, yeah, no, they're not wrong. That, <laughs> that game, I played it at launch. Yeah. I played it for about 30 hours I'm until, so I, until I hit a game-breaking bug where I couldn't pick up people anymore. And I said, well... 
There goes my stealth run. Hey, man, you should, <laughs> should have played it on Stadia. It worked there from day one. I should have been a, like a murder hobo, but I wasn't. I was trying to be like, what if I did like this pacifist run? Now I have a giant katana, but that's beside the point. As you should. Um, thank you. Uh, but no, like the level up system, the progression, um, skill trees, it does not I mean visually it looks like the same game it's, it's a nice if you got a fancy playstation 5 xbox series x or computer it looks gorgeous lots it, of sexy robot uh, people aesthetically around. looks great um mechanically it is almost an entirely different game at this point mm -hmm. and is way more engaging to play because i am tailoring my play style to the stuff i want to get and like the more you do a thing hey the more it level lets you level up Right. Uh oh, oh, path. wait, oh no, Final Fantasy 2! Run, run! Hey, you know my feelings on Final Fantasy 2. I know, that's what I'm worried about! <laughs> so yeah, oh, God. The, the, more, the more I run straight at somebody with a sword, just screaming, NINJA! The more the game rewards me. That's how it works in real life, too. Yeah. I mean, it's... I've got so much money that it's, way. It's, it's a battle tactic, it frightens a lot of people. Um, of course. Do it on the boardwalk, you get so many free skee-ball games. Yeah, um, but no, like, it, it has been... The problems with the narrative are the problems with the narrative. Hey, yeah. like that base game, they didn't change any of that stuff. Mm -hmm. So like if, if Johnny Silverhand, Keanu Reeves doing his point break impression uh, did not do anything for you, that's that hasn't changed, right? right. So it's but, still cybercrime. Hey, hey, it's still it's still the same flipping game. I, yeah. I will say I have not gotten to the new Phantom Liberty stuff yet oh. because I started my game over. <laughs> oh, okay. So you're not um, doing any of the spy stuff yet. You not just, yet, okay. no. Yeah, um, I, I, will, I will be happy to report back once I get there because – Hey, yeah. Uh, with the new gameplay setup, that I'm, I am surprisingly enjoying myself. Those cars are still crap to drive. I I hate using any vehicle in that game, but it doesn't look great. Um, it it is. I've been super enjoying myself, just being living out my my hacker future. Uh, I have a really cool like they they give you wardrobe options now. Like it's in the original run of the game, your armor and all that stuff was based on your clothing, which yeah. meant if you didn't want to die. Congratulations, you're wearing fishnets, uh, a bomber jacket, uh, booty shorts, uh, elbow-high gloves, mm -hmm. and a aviator helmet. Yeah, it's like D&D. &D. You're wearing, like, the pants of blocking. You yeah, know? no, it's like, you're, you're, it's like I, if I don't want to die, I'm going to wear this and look like a dumbass. Yeah. <laughs> so, and, so there was no, like, cosmetic the, armor then that went over that? No. Well, the what they did is defense. they basically said, hey, yeah. when we redesigned the whole game, what if we took all the stats off all the clothing? <laughs> <laughs> okay. They also let you respect now anytime you want. Yes. Right? So, like, if I find nice. out that I don't want to be a screaming ninja yeah. anymore, I can be like, you know what? What if I was only baseball bats and shotguns? And I was just a very, very scary person. And that, just, that feels more fitting for a cyberpunk game. Yeah. You know, about being able to change yourself. And oh, yeah. Thing, right? Body modification. Yeah. Da, 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 da. yeah, no. Right. It's way more thematically, like, matching what they're doing, right? Like, it's. For anybody who is remotely curious about checking it out or like heard stuff, like I would, I would recommend diving back in, and I would, honest to God, take their advice and be like, "Hey, no, maybe start the game over," because I could mm -hmm. not imagine. Because if you pick up where your character was, right, they literally go, "Hey, all of your stats don't matter anymore because we ripped it all off your equipment." Yep. <laughs> Here's this giant skill tree and a million points because you're X level now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Just figure it out. It's like no. Okay. No, thank you. Mm -hmm. Um, it, it's like going into WoW with like, hey, here's a level seventy character. You got this, right? It's like, uh... so this is this is a redemption story. This is, yeah. This I mean, is here's the thing. Like, that, there, yeah. there, there is there's many lessons to be learned from the story of Cyberpunk 2077. Yeah. <laughs> Delay your games. It, yeah. <laughs> no man's Cyberpunk let, 2077. Let them cook. Yeah. Uh, let them cook. That's right. right. Um, yeah. but yeah, no, like that. The game where it's at now is a totally easy recommend of a game to play because it's just awesome. like no this is good like if you if you like this stuff it's super fun and yeah like you get to play however you want and it's, and it it's rewards nice you when games for get finished it's, i mean, I mean yeah. it is it's sort of fucked up that like <laughs> you sit here and you can look at and be like hey yeah this is probably the finished product they had in, in planned it's, for. It's and very clear the developers wanted to release a game like this. Yeah, like, mm -hmm. no, and this it's, is and what I, they were building. I legitimately am so happy they were able to have the time and the ability to do it because yeah. where it's at now, super good. And so, yeah, no, I am fluctuating wildly like I'm Doctor Who, going between fantasy, you know, olden times and Baldur's Gate and the far-flung dystopic future that we're, like, slowly leaning towards with Cyberpunk. And it's a very – it's a good pendulum. Mm -hmm. Guys, 
I could recommend a pendulum swing. This is a good pendulum swing. Well Fair swung. Enough. Fair enough. Yeah, I know. So, anyways, like that's that's what I've been doing. Has anybody like Jared broke a TV? Yeah. I'm time traveling. What are you guys? Have you been doing anything remotely of interest? I'm managing a zoo. I'm really in the planet zoo again. That's okay. Right. I was like, I have no idea am, what you're talking about. Is it like you I and Mark Wahlberg or like... obsessed. No, that's that's Matt Damon. Matt Damon. Yeah. Matt Damon bought a zoo. Oh, okay. Yeah. What you did know, Mark Wahlberg did? I didn't buy a zoo, he but I'm Matt building Damon. a zoo. I'm building the best zoo. I've created an axolotl puppy mill that is funding oh. all of my conservation efforts. A, a what now? Okay, so Planet Zoo, you have two types of animals. You have habitat animals, which you make the big fun habitat for. Uh -huh. And then you have exhibit animals, which go in a building, and you can't really interact with them or do anything. Okay. But exhibit animals, you can have the game auto-manage them. So I found the two best axolotls in the marketplace. Got them to mate with each other. And I sell all their offspring for like twelve hundred bucks each. Okay. Okay. This seems like a good business and model. And it is keeping. Does it? <laughs> it is keeping the zoo. Look, it's a good thing objectively because axolotls are one of the most endangered animals on our planet. So let's send them to the highest bidder. So Eleanor, have you yeah. thought about like going like into this in real life? Like maybe you should be like breeding axolotls like for for money now. I I don't think what I'm doing would be legal. No! Oh, okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> in the like, real world. Like, I don't know. But, okay, so so the whole reason I, 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 I am, I'm basically doing a Breaking Bad for Santos. Yeah. Santos is what? my Galapagos giant turtle. Okay. And I baby my Galapagos giant turtle. What is going on? It's, it's a zoo. I'm, I'm managing a zoo. Yeah. So Santos is my favorite animal in my zoo. Okay. And I'm doing this all for him. I make sure he's always at 100%. Screw all the other animals. Santos is who's important. He brings in the money, too. Uh -huh. People donate to Santos. He's very cute. When Santos dies in 40 years, 40 in-game years, okay. the zoo's done. How do you know when this Santos is going to die? Uh, the average lifespan of a Galapagos giant tortoise is about 140 years old. Oh, okay. He's 100 now. now. Just, I just thought just, you had just for, for the sake of the, the parents in the audience, did you learn that playing Planet Zoo? or No, did you I already knew all this. Okay. Because I, I really it. love animals. That's and great. I really love well, see, that's the thing. This felt so against your character to do that with the animals. I don't know why, but I was like... Yeah. This... Well, they're not real. Yeah, that counts for a lot. Yeah, the fact yeah. that they are un they're, unreal. They're oh, not no. real. I so, love that you're kind of going Westworld with your with yeah, your animals here. So, so basically, wonderful. when Santos dies, I'm going to get bored of the game. I'm going to release all the tigers, and um, yeah. then I'm going to play City Skylines too. Like, like, like if Mr. Burns released the hounds thing, or, or just like release I'm going to set them all or? free. Just while there are visitors in the zoo, I hope. Yeah. Okay, good. It's Safe. a 24-hour zoo, actually, because <laughs> oh, you okay. make more revenue that way. I would go to a zoo at 3 a.m. If, if they were open at 3. I Okay. I feel for the workers. No, that sounds great. Is this unethical, John? I, I As someone who studied <laughs> ethics with a, for a useless degree, yeah, it's got some problems. It's a, little, it's a little problematic. But I think the ends justify the means because I'm helping promote conservation. Well, here's the thing. I went to business yep. school, right? What I learned was business ethics are business suggestions, Okay. Listen, we in Mom. this in this MAGA chat GPT universe, we're well beyond the ethics at this point. I think we can just do whatever we want. I I, I think uh, I think Cheedy failed. Uh, I, I think he he made that big pot of chili and put marshmallows in it, and from then on, ethics was dead. So I, you do what you you're want. Right. I I think all that matters is that line go up, and that makes my brain feel good. Stonks. I have some really good clicker games for you if you just if that's all you're needing. The Last that's of Us, really... The Last of Us Two, like those that, are the two honestly... really good clicker games I know. <laughs> Universal paper clips. Honestly, oh, I could just play Planet Zoo and the hour of Sudoku I play in bed before I go to sleep, and I would probably be happy. Okay, maybe that's what I you like should numbers. do with your life. You know what? You know what? I'm just gonna I'm just gonna throw I'm gonna throw here. Now that everybody's feeling great and really just thinking a lot about everyone, we're gonna go ahead and move on to our big chatty chat of 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 the episode here. Uh, we're gonna get Nathan off. Hey, wait, phrasing. Mm -hmm. We're gonna 
have Nathan God. leave the pod table. Is this like the polar bear question again? We're not. No. Are you just thinking about Halson? No, Are I you don't even. About Daddy Halson. Number one. No. <laughs> Carla, born life, she bay. <laughs> fair. Nathan's gonna leave the table through the magic of editing, and we're gonna bring in producer Joe, Joe the producer, aka Joey M. We're gonna have him come no. on. <laughs> what? No, you don't like that one. Don't do that. You don't. You, you're well, not you're, him. Yeah. Yeah. You're, you don't care. You're, you're I don't not care what be you on think. This segment. That's why you're leaving the table. Go sit in the producer's chair, Nathan. Okay. okay. All right. We'll be right back after this brief. Uh, we're not. Gonna, I mean, I want to say after these brief messages. There's no messages. There are no messages. No. Um, but it's if just there, a star wipe. If there, if there are messages after them, Yeesh. we'll have Joe here at the table, and we're gonna be talking about some sequels. Bye, Cheerios. What? Hey everybody, we're back with everyone's favorite Willy Wombat fan. Whoa, Joe. Will, Willy Wombat? Willy really? Wombat. No, the, the Michigan joke was you're better, you're funnier than him. Number what one. Michigan joke? Well, you made it, but I guess it's probably not going to be on the recording. Oh no, it probably won't. Yeah. No, it won't so, make it through editing. Yeah. So, but you know why least... I said it was a Willy Wombat joke? Because I knew it was going to crash. Oh wow. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of you, wow, I have a grievance. Okay. About the a part of the podcast that I was not on, uh, you said pendulum, yeah, and I couldn't focus for the rest of the oh. conversation. Pendulum, 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 pendulum. You said it pendulum. Is pendulum. I know and it's pendulum. You said it like four times in a row. Wait, and is it pendulum? It is pendulum. Really? I was being polite, and not saying anything. I thought it was I didn't pendulum. want to rock the boat. Yeah, I couldn't take it. I thought it was pendulum. Really? Serious? It's, it's pendulum. I was already pushing things with the like animal trading thing, so I didn't want to. On Seinfeld, don't they always say pendulum publishing? That's not what it's called. Huh? <laughs> or no, it's pendant. Pendant publishing. Yeah. Okay. Well, <laughs> they, don't, they don't say so that at all. Record, okay, I don't say it at all. I have, yeah. I have the writer on my side, so I don't feel. I don't that know that bad. you really do though, because he is misunderstood. He misremembered I'm also an a writer, thing. and I disagree. Yeah, she's a better writer I'm than also, I am. I'm she also disagrees. a writer, not the, not the same way. Hey, Joe, we don't give you credit for being a writer. <laughs> well, I wrote some stuff. Yeah. Have you ever played Plumbers Don't Wear Ties remastered? Uh, you know, actually, I have now, and uh, yeah, <laughs> I wrote some words in there. You know, yeah. that's a garbage video game. <laughs> well, yeah, that wasn't a very good job. Hey, Joe, introduce yourself <laughs> and what, what do yeah, you do? Yeah, who who the hell who, are, who you? are you? Uh, is this is the, oh, so I've not been on here before. No, no. this is this is no, this, yeah. is, this is, is episode is, one. No, right, yeah, right, this right, is the right. first episode. No, there Whatever. might we've the, never recorded anything before. No, this no, never. Absolutely not. Okay. It's certainly not an episode where Joe was a guest star. Yeah, uh, I'm Joe Modulewski. I'm the development director at Limited Run Games, so I oversee all of our internal development efforts. That's the Carbon Engine stuff, mm-hmm. so emulation stuff. That's uh, original titles we develop in-house. Original titles like what, Joe? Like Plumbers Don't Wear Ties Definitive Edition, which is an original title. It is different than the yeah. original game. has a dungeon. So it, it's Yeah, and you're going to plumb the depths of it. You are going to plumb the depths of that dungeon. So also has Pete in it. Pete is in it. Uh, nobody knows who Pete is, but they will. But what about our Zet? Uh, yeah, I'm involved as uh, like a consultant and producer mm-hmm. on games that we publish digitally, like RZ, the Jewel of Fairmore. So, so you make games? I make video games. You also wrote, mm-hmm. predicted, pro- or produced, and directed the film Jurassic Park, which yep. the popular video games we're releasing are based on. Yeah, I don't know if we could say that NBC might get mad about that. Oh, okay. Right. Yeah. So we, let's not misrepresent but y- the brand. You are, uh, you are responsible for Bill and Ted. Yeah, I, uh, yeah, I'm responsible <laughs> for bringing that singularly back. responsible back here. No, we have all the yeah. ones. They're all out there. It was you and George Carlin. I tried to get somebody at Portland Retro to buy Bill and Ted, not from our booth, but it was at someone else's booth for a marked up price, and I tried to get them to buy it um, by telling them I would sign it for them, and they didn't. They didn't. They didn't get no. It would like the whole joke didn't hey, land. Hey, no. If, uh, and they hey, left. that person, if you're out there, if you're watching this. You'll make that game. You could have signed that. If, yeah. if you that would have uh, doubled, tripled the value. Well, if and you're I that lost person on a financial investment. If you're that person, uh, contact me via Twitter, via the the company's Twitter account. I will send you a copy of Bill and Ted. I didn't. Well, I didn't sign, tell sign, them sign that I joke. that I made it at all either. I just was like, if you buy that, I'll sign it. I'll, it was it, a complete stranger and a complete I'll, stranger's. <laughs> that probably came across really creepy. Yeah. Probably. It's kind of like if, you're standing if you in a want to lot. admit to me that you are that person, I will make sure you get a copy. It's like you standing like in a yeah. parking lot with like a brown paper bag, being like, "Hey, you want to copy a Bill and Ted?" Well, that's like, what I do on my weekends. Yeah. Uh, okay. Wow, uh, we have fucked up your introduction. This is great. That's fine. That's his. That's his pedigree. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. Honestly, it's 
the pendulum of the conversation swings. The, and, you know, you just got to follow where it goes. The pendant, um, you mean? I don't know what you're yeah, talking about. All uh, right. So, hey, Joe, we brought you on today to talk about, mm-hmm. like, I, I, technically sequels, I guess, would be would be the easy easy thing. See, here, here's a fun fact. Baldur's Gate 3, this game that most of us are playing, have played at some point. Um, do you know how long it has been? Jared, Jared does. I told Jared this earlier. Do you know how long it's been? The I, gap knew before between... you, I knew before you told me, John. I know things. I also knew this. Fine. The gap between releases? It's between, been like about 20 two, years. It's been 23 years. Yeah. It was released in 2000. Yeah. Oh, I, I, I yeah. guess for whatever reason, I remember Baldur's Gate 2 as being a little bit further, like 2002. The, well, there was like a... Their, their expansion was literally yeah. a year apart. So they did, okay. the first one was in 2000, and then in 2001, they released... Uh, Throne of Ball, Ta- I think, is which it, was the expansion title. Wait, is Tales of the Sword Coast? Is that no? What, which one is nope. that? No, <laughs> no. No, Sword Coast Adventure is a completely different game. No, there's one of the Baldur's Gate Are you expansions. Doing Dark Alliance? No, no. It's Let's Alliance? not Dark do Alliance this. Alliance there are so many expansions to D and D games, and Look. we'll sit Well, no, forever. Baldur's Gate only has one expansion, and Baldur's Gate Two only has one. So there's the, the, the Sword Baldur's Coast Gate is in had the two expansions because Beam Dog did a new one. The Assault on Dragon oh Spear. yeah, for the uh, the, the, the console edition. version. Yeah. yeah, yeah, okay. Which I've never played. Me neither. Icewind DL Temple of Elemental Evil Planescape Torment D and D words. Sorry. I'm just saying the words Sword Coast are in one of those, whether it's Baldur's Gate <laughs> one or two, or the expansion to one of them. You're saying there's a D and D game that refers let's, to the Sword uh, Coast? Yeah, yeah, so yeah. I'm not even. Let's we not get we into cannot. this can of worms. So this canon record, of Forgotten Worms. Forgotten Realms, Demon Stone is actually a pretty good third-person action game for the PlayStation 2. Um, that being said, it was written by Ari Salvatore. Uh, <laughs> I mean, let, let's not forget D&D Slayer for the 3DO while we're at it. I mean, come on. No, we can. We can forget that. We can forget yeah. that. Let's forget that. I like that game. So, we had a game released this year that is probably going to be in, not probably going to be, is going to be in contention for Game of the Year, right? Yeah. yeah. It is a 23-year-old sequel <laughs> That somehow became the biggest thing, which is incredible. Technically, it is, it is not a 23-year-old sequel. It's a sequel to a 23-year-old game. You deserve it's to be called out as often I, as possible. You sound like you're trying to justify no, but an it's, inappropriate but it's, relationship. No, but it's it's canon a sequel, I, I, though. I, I, it, is, hey, it is a sequel. I love sequel. having you here, Joe. Yeah, 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 but the sequel itself is not 23 We are years not old. okay. Oh, God. Rule no, new rule. <laughs> <laughs> no one, including myself, can be a pedantic asshole. <laughs> no I, one. Listen, I just... John, I'm, could you make your point? Yeah. Yeah. John, get to We're the point. all getting fucking older over here. Can we swear on that? I don't yes, know. Yes, we can. Or are you going to bleep me? No, we, might, bleep. we might bleep. Yeah. Well, that's going to be better if you just bleep the whole thing yeah. out. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways. And everything he says, just bleep the whole fucking thing out. Listen, that game is huge, and people were excited about it, despite the giant gap, which I thought would be a fun time to talk about what game would you love to see Mr. Game Designer, a sequel mm-hmm. to that is years, years, decades even, like just waiting in the wings, waiting to happen. Am I going first? You don't have to. Mm, yeah. you can. Well, because you directed it like right at me. Well, you were the one being a smartass about it. Yeah. So I <laughs> also, you're the guest, and we, okay. we wanted to respect yeah. you. With the, it's like the place of honor at the table. Okay. All right. You yeah, know? I'll, I'll take that. That's uh, that's that's kind of encouraging. And plus, um, you're going to do that thing where you say one thing, and then we'll start talking, and you'll think of another one, and come back around at the end and do that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I got like a hundred of them. Um, okay, so sequels, games that should have gotten a sequel. Yeah, the, like the, if it got made, like today, you'd be mm-hmm. excited about. Okay, well, there's a ton of answers I could give you. I'm gonna give you an actually, I'm gonna give you a totally sincere, genuine one though. Okay. Uh-huh. I shouldn't have, but I'm gonna. I, I, I don't know you well, that, but well, it's listen, what I'm gonna do. Hey, you do it. I was rummaging through your stuff, uh-huh. and I stole a copy of Zelda Two from your uh, display case. <laughs> I could have walked out the door with it, um, but I brought it in here instead. Why did you do that again? Uh, because it's a per- this is the game I'm going to talk about. So Joe comes like in here and shoplifts. We're at the retail show. I also and, do that. And, and Joe comes in yeah. here and stuffs I also, up and do his. I also his buy things though. Like I yeah. buy a lot of them, so he's fine. He's thinking about all the. I bought and stuff fucking. Uh, I bought I'm just, James Pond, so did, I'm allowed to shoplift. Oh, that's that's not a one to one thing. <laughs> I'm just pointing out um, the security issues in your store while also supporting the podcast. We're not even open. Um. Anyway, somehow that's worse. I think. Zelda 2. It doesn't say it on the front of this because it's the green reprint, or the gray reprint. Why did I say green? Um, but it would say Zelda 2 up here. Zelda 2 
kind of an important one for me because I care so much and believe so much in the validity of a sequel to this game's design that I made one. So about eight years ago, I made a game called Super Gun World 2, which was a hybrid between Zelda 2 and Mega Man, two of my favorite games. Uh, this is an awesome game. I'll give you kind of a like, very, very, very boiled down reason why I think this deserves a sequel. Uh, the NES is kind of the origin point for most of the DNA of our biggest genres that survive today. Your shit like platformers. Mm -hmm. uh, well, like platformers as they are today, like yeah. the Mario style platformer, Zelda style games, shooters, racing games. Um, you know, you've got like your Metroid style games. Like a lot of these games got their first like real, totally boiled down skeleton of what their, their structure is on the NES. Then you have a game like Zelda 2 that just died there. Uh -huh. It is a unique type of game, mm -hmm. it is different than all of its other contemporaries at the time. But it is weirdly the only one that didn't get explored further as time went on. Excuse me, sir. Ease three would 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 like a word with you. Well, so here's the thing. There's also like an Adventure Time game that's similar to Zelda right. two, and like There's, I just said, yeah. there is Super Gun World two. If you want a game like that, but there are not a lot of them. Right. And no major developers continued experimenting with the very unique structure of this game. By the uh, way, I am so excited. You were holding before you one of my very favorite video this games. This is one of my favorite games yeah. of all time. You and I joke about not agreeing on things, but actually we usually do. Yeah, there's, this is this is one of them. This is one of them. So please continue, but I, I, I want to hear. I, I, can't I, I don't really need to sit here and like give a lecture on what Zelda 2 is. People know what Zelda 2 is. I think that the game um, is very unfairly maligned. Uh, I think its biggest issues, the biggest grievances you can have with this game are things that a lot of NES games were guilty of at the time. It has what a lot of people call like Nintendo power issues, that there are things about this game that are just designed in this really stupid way that you need a guide to get through it. Deliberately but, designed so you need a guide. Yes, to get but the thing is that is not unique or exclusive to Zelda 2. Mm -hmm. That is a common design flaw across the NES library. They wanted to sell magazines yep. and they literally built stealth stuff in so you would buy them. Yep, cuz well they wanted to they wanted to sell the magazines and they wanted to stop and discourage rentals. Yep. Right? Um, nothing about Zelda 2 in its biggest flaws is unique to Zelda 2 and its design. It's it's just sharing design issues of the platform and design of the time, right? So it's just really weird to me that this was never explored more. Uh, so yeah, I decided because I actually tried to make a game like it, Maybe I'd come on and give an actual genuine answer. That's that's my answer. Can you? Can you? And briefly, I also wanted to steal from you. Can you so. briefly summarize why it's good? Like you talk about its uniqueness. What's unique and good? Uh, Zelda Two is unique and interesting because it has um, it has DNA of the Zelda dungeon crawling. Right. right. It has Zelda dungeon crawling, but it plays it in a two D way in a 2D perspective, right? But it manages to do so in a way that doesn't feel like Metroid. It has a non-linearity to it, but it is unique from what makes Metroid and its 2D non-linearity yep. exploration unique to that, right? Um, it ha it kind of has this hybrid between that and the original kind of top-down exploration. You get a lot of what you're getting out of games like Dragon Warrior and Zelda at the time, getting to explore these massive environments, but you get far more intimate, fast-paced, really well-tuned action combat. That's platforming, it. 2D exploration. It is just a kind of mashup of all these different things that you think shouldn't work well together because mashing genres usually doesn't work very well. But it does. And it even has RPG elements to it that are satisfying to use. Very satisfying. It's, it's super fun to fight a Dark Nut for the first time at level 2 and really struggle against that. Mm -hmm. And then encounter another one when you're level 6 or 7 and just blast the thing to pieces. Yeah. Right? But like, it's not just because you've gotten stronger. It's because you've, because gotten, you've also better. gotten better. Yeah. Right. That's the. So not only are you hitting more frequently, but those hits are hitting harder because you've leveled up. It's all all around. It has a great sense of progression to I, it. I regret to, or probably I hesitate to say this are you because gonna, are you gonna say it's the Dark Souls of I, Zelda games. I am. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I've I made this. Yeah. I was waiting all. I was like I was like I'm gonna make this People, joke, and but then Jared's gonna say it. I gotta sincerely. be really. Yeah, yeah. I'm actually saying it sincerely, <laughs> but not for the reasons I think people think. People always use Dark Souls as code for difficulty. Zelda 2 is difficult, but it's not that difficult. It's really um, not. The, the, the Great Palace is a pain. Yeah, so but I the think... most of the game's not that difficult. No, I think the most difficult parts in Zelda 2 is just that it's really, really punishing. When you yeah. do make a mistake, they make you pay for it. They do. Um, but you don't have to make mistakes. You can get good enough not to. What I like about it is that, and why I can spare it to Dark Souls, 
is you have a very limited number of abilities in Zelda. Uh, you effectively have seven combat moves, uh, as well as a handful of, of other very limited abilities you can only use sparingly. And you have a couple of dozen different kinds of enemies. And every one of those must be engaged by the limited set of tools in a completely different way to succeed. The combat is incredible. For what, for what you were seeing on the platform at the time, it has so much more variety than most action games. And that's when you remove all of the other parts of the equation, the RPG elements, the exploration. Right. Just the combat is then when you so add, well too. And when you add the RPG elements where you're getting stronger and get that reward feeling as you then that you were talking about, it really reminds me of Dark Souls. Every encounter is a challenge. Every encounter has to be approached differently. And as you progress through the game, both skill and and your gradually cascading arsenal of weapons and experience allow you to succeed more thoroughly and feel better about yourself. So by the end of the game, you become a master of combat and, you know, a walking god. Then the Great Palace says, I don't care, and just kills you anyway. But it also has one of my favorite frustrating sequences in a game because it's Death Mountain? it's just really funny. No, no, it's beyond that. When you're towards the end of the game and all those lizard men just keep coming out from behind a fence and throwing rocks. Oh at you. yeah, isn't that great? <laughs> it's God. just like you've you've fought like like all these weird like half animal, half man beasts, yeah. like monsters, dragons, and then you get to this like one of the most dangerous spots in the world, and it's just lizards coming out from behind a wooden fence, yep. throwing, throwing rocks, rocks at, at you, you while yeah. you're trying to go down the road. And you can't reach them. No, you can't do anything about it. You, you just, just have to sit take there and take rocks. it. And it's uh, one of my favorite video games. Joe and I ever. could sit over here and have the Zelda hour for an hour. I'm a Listen, little worried we might nothing, be. Nothing you're that. saying is wrong. It's, 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 I know, because I said it. Mm. Mm. <laughs> mm. Words have meaning. Uh, anyways, but no, listen, that's entertaining. I, you guys keep talking about it. But um, I listen, here's the thing, though. I know, if I know anything, thank you for the sincere answer. I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. That's good quality, quality casting there. Thank you so much. Um, and I know Jared's going to have somewhere in the middle between sincerity and, like, off the wall. No, mine's sincere. entirely sincere. See, okay, that's okay. But it's also going to be off the wall. It's like a great pumpkin, like pumpkin patch, like literally. I it's so sincere. See, okay, yeah. Which means I'm going to go to Eleanor next. Oh, oh yeah. Mine's we sincere to too. Every, is, did everybody pick something that's just like, wow, it's I October. Deeply, I it's like time for sincerity. I, de I deeply, yeah, I feel like I deeply I, care. Okay, I, I, mean, like I, I, have, I have a couple answers. It's fine. Eleanor, what's yours? What, what do you, what do you, what do you, what's, your, what's your grail? Mine's Chibi Robo. Ooh. Okay. And not the two. That's a game I love to Not Zip It. Not Zip It, even Not though it. I actually enjoyed Ziplash. Ziplash, sorry, yeah. Ziplash, and there was that weird photo game. So Chibi Robo is is this game that exists in the mid two thousands, and it's kind of stuck there. Yeah. Like, I mean, it, it you play a I mean a tiny robot, a little a, little a chibi, cleaning a, chi a Chibi Robo, if you will. Yeah, a little cleaning robot, and you know you experience the lives of this family mm -hmm. as you know kind of like a fly on the wall watching it. And you encounter all the other weird little things in the house. And I just want to be more in that world. And Chibi Robo, it's such an opportunity because he's mass produced. <laughs> Every yeah. house has a Chibi Robo. I want to go in all those houses and see those people's lives. Like, mm -hmm. And I like that that gameplay loop was really fun of picking shit up and cleaning. Maybe it's just because I'm a weirdo, but I like cleaning. <laughs> Oh, I, I think, Eleanor, that there's a through line from our, our friendship I'm discovering here. You like games where you play as small things in other people's homes. You like Sim Ant, too, right? Yeah, For I love Sim Ant. A lot of the same reasons. But I, I got a dopamine hit when you said Chibi Robo. I didn't yeah. know that was coming. It's and, so oh, I love that good. And, and, like, honestly, you talk to anybody who has played Chibi Robo, <laughs> and they fucking love that game because it's a good game. It's Nintendo. But it's, it's like, just stuck in... In limbo, yeah, because it's not been you know released digitally anywhere. Mm -hmm. You know, I think didn't they do like a Wii port of it? I believe so. I don't was even. The port? I, I remember. Was the port. Might have been. A I remember sequel. that. I, don't know. I remember the platformer. I remember the, the weird platform. Yeah, yeah, that the Ziplash zip that that's came the with the that's amiibo. The, that's the mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Of. But it's just it feels like such a missed opportunity because you have a marketable, cute little mascot. Yeah. I mean, for God's sake, they made an amiibo of him, like. He's a, he's a little Roomba robot. He's a, he's a little guy. Yeah, and he's so cute. I would love to see more of his cousins. What would your game be like? It would pretty much just be the 
a, like a, more. a spiritual successor to, to the original Chibi Robo. So the same type of gameplay, you know, maybe a little cleaned up for modern sensibilities and yeah. such. Because there's some frustrating parts of Chibi Cause, Robo. Yeah, because it, yeah. it, you know, it plays like a, a GameCube game from yeah. 2006 or whenever the hell this was. Like, mm-hmm. so I would just want it, but the gameplay is pretty solid. Like, I think it's a good loop to it and everything. So there isn't much I would change. I would just do more of Chibi Robo. I want Chibi Robo, but it's Chibi Robo versus Pikmin, and you go in the backyard oh. and just murder them. I want Chibi Robo, but in a serial killer's house, so the M rated version. Yeah, like, okay, well, that's the thing. Mosquito. You could have a mystery <laughs> version of Chibi Robo. Yeah, like, where is like, he putting the bodies? There's something fucking weird going on in this yeah. house. Yeah. The, the cursed idea I just had was like, oh, Chibi Robo is just Babu Frick from Star Wars. He's just a weird little guy. He is just stuff. a weird little guy. Everybody, who everybody stuff. likes a weird little guy. Everybody especially, likes a weird little guy. Especially a weird little guy that's spying on a family. That's, listen, yeah. that's why we have Nathan on the podcast. Wow. Now, he's living in the house of that weird family and elite beat agents where the dad died and only yeah. comes back as a ghost for the birthdays, and Chibi Robo is you there. You're talking about ghost to... dad? I mean, like... No, I'm talking about uh, elite beat everybody agents. Everybody should know, I love I <laughs> love games about little guys that live in a house with weird little families, because, like, mis- yeah. no one can stop Mr. Domino is my favorite game. Okay, there we go. And that literally has a level where you're just fucking yep. up this family shit. <laughs> Where do you land on the Mr. Mosquito scale of like Mr. Is, is that is that? A, is, I like Mr. Mosquito. Okay. Mr. Mosquito is another one I'd like to see. You know, at, as long at as least, you're like a little a creepy little guy. At least, at least put happen? it on it. Hey everybody, we're back from some uh, fun, difficult. I mean, you're seeing us again, so obviously maybe can't. is there an like just an audio version of this? No, they're just bounced by now. I mean, the audio there is an audio version. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. you're making a lot of assumptions about how people are consuming the content. Shut up, Joe. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. anyways, Chibi Robo. That's a cool game. It's it, a cool it deserves, game. It deserves a sequel. Jared, what's your utterly sincere answer for like a game you want to like be risen from a franchise to be risen from the proverbial grave? Yeah, this is this is just a very personal one for me. No, uh, and I mentioned earlier, you know, it's when we're recording this. It's October. It's spooky season. Uh, and wow, you know, wow, all ruining, ruining the magic of when we're recording this. Right. All sincerity comes from the Great Pumpkin. Um, Costume Quest Two ended on a cliffhanger. And I want to answer. end that story. Huh. I have a custom quest is one of my very favorite video games. It's so fucking um, good. It is. It's charming. It's a little tiny dragon quest with incredible writing about Halloween, my favorite holiday. Little kids wearing costumes, collecting candy, using their imaginations and saving the world. Costume Quest 2, despite some mechanical inconsistencies that were later addressed in a patch, um, is actually, I, I think, maybe even better written uh, than, than the first one. It's certainly uh, certainly uh, on par with it and took the series in some really bold and exciting, fun time travel, time loop directions. And then it literally ends with our characters like floating in space, like ready to re-enter the final chapter of the story, and it never got made. And I think that it is well past time for a third and final costume quest to wrap the story uh, of of these kids up, uh, I want more costumes, more homemade joy. I, I have so. Those costumes were based on the costumes the creators like parents made them for them as a kid. You know, mm-hmm. like that 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 game has so much love in it, and I want to immerse myself for another five or six hours in a little world of of turn based comment combat funny puzzle solving classic double fine humor and a satisfying heartwarming conclusion uh i you know i yes i i want a million venerated storied triple a franchises to have their endings i you know in a dream universe i want to write portal 3 you know but but uh i think i it could be one more of those I mean, but we'll, we'll we'll call up phil you know we'll call up tim and yeah. just be like hey guys hey in the spirit of spooky season. Yeah, where is this? Where what what's going on? Costume uh, Quest 3. I've never I've never played Costume Quest 1 or 2. <gasps> and uh yeah, you're you're painting a picture here that sounds like something that maybe I should be playing this year. You should be I've, playing I've, it. I've never played it. It's very before. good. What if yeah. all right, I mean I've, I've not played them either. Yeah, okay, you so should play them, John. They're very good. They're, I've heard this. They I, really I heard this are. Very, it's the, like, it's I heard this literally very artistically beautiful, like the you know, perfect time. That was such a good, sincere answer. I, know, I have nothing. So, I have no, nothing no, to riff on. Yeah, like, no, 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 Jerry's here's no. Okay. You just left me. You should all just go game. play hey, Costume guys, Quest, guys. I'm gonna tell you a secret about working with with a one Jared Petty. Um, he's so nice and like so from the heart. 
Now, to be clear, this is like a 50-50 split, okay? So, like, but when he's Jekyll, he's so nice and from the heart. <laughs> and, like, you can't respond to anything he says because you're like, oh, my God, you're so right. Get and fucked, you, And you said – and then he does that. And then he talks about Banjo-Kazooie, and it's like, how can you be Yeah, no, listen, so he, like, he flips on a dime from, like, everything you say is – could not be more true and so heartwarming. And then he says the most just, like, wildly wrong opinion. <laughs> Yeah, well, it's just there are two of me. It's it's like the prestige. Like um, I'm just like the bloated version of um, of. Uh, are you about to ruin yeah, the prestige of, for someone? Uh, Christian Bale. Yeah, <laughs> there's just two of me running around the whole time, and uh, that, that's yeah. what it is. We just yeah. switch places every I, day. I didn't know I was gonna need to put a spoiler tag for a, a Christopher Nolan movie, but here we are. Um, if you haven't seen the Prestige by now, you deserve what you get. Hey, you um, know what? That movie, I don't even know what it is. Seriously. It's have a, you never it's seen a the movie? Film. That's a, a very good have film. Have I never seen a movie before? No, I know you've seen a movie before, <laughs> but have you seen The Prestige? Uh, yeah, uh, no. I have okay. seen, I've you, seen did, good did movies, you see though. Have you, ever, have you ever seen uh, Suburban Sasquatch? Have you ever uh, seen Replicator? Yes. Have Actually, you? Yes. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Fuck you, Joe. You thought you, thought you yeah, had Yeah, I really thought I threw yeah. one out have there for you. Have you seen Suburban Commando? Uh, no, but I've heard. I've, I've seen yeah, but box. have you seen Extraterrestrial Visitors? Have you seen Velocipaster? I have Velocipaster, uh, Velocipaster, but I haven't opened it Velocipaster yet. Velocipaster is disappointing. Velocipaster right. it, looks honestly, like it has it, a lot of potential that it does not yeah. live up it to. It looks like like a Sharknado ass bad movie, also which is that it's racist. not actually. Oh, yeah. Okay. yeah. I mean, I'm a fan of Zombie Beavers for how like utterly horrifying that movie is. I have a movie called <laughs> on my shelf. I haven't watched it yet. John, <laughs> what? <laughs> John, John, answer your answer the prompt. <laughs> Just cut that uh, whole thing just, out. Just no, no, don't bleep the whole thing. I have a movie called. Mm. Just, it's so much better. If, it's gonna be so much better if you don't let people know what the you name of the movie is. You don't bleep is. it. You just have it say "My Little Pony: Friendship <laughs> is Magic." Like, that's fine. John, a bleep will be good. What is what? What game do you want a sequel for? Honestly, I've I've said this before in conversation when we were talking about what we were gonna talk about. But if, it, it, is, it is truly here's the thing. We're all giving sincere answers, so I feel like I have to say it again. Yeah. Like I. I, I really would love a sequel to Zen and Gears. <laughs> like, here's the thing. That game... Okay. You know what? I'll accept it. Mr. Thanks, Hyde disapproves. That's fine. <laughs> That's fine. Like, here's the thing. We, would we, you just we be... agree in our disapproval. Yeah, yeah like, it would okay, just be. So... Would just, just be a blank disc? Would that be... <laughs> no, that's you're, not rude. You're just sitting rude. in a chair gonna the whole be, time? It's going to be a screenplay. <laughs> It's just, <laughs> it's just a piece it's of one paper. disc. It's one disc that you play, and then when you get to the cliffhanger right. of that disc, you were then handed the the story bible. <laughs> yeah. Like, hey, here's the rest. So pretty like, much Metal Gear Solid Five. Effectively. Okay. Um, there we like, go. Well, here's the thing. But like, with less gameplay. Yeah. With less, less gameplay. gameplay. Uh, there's a lot of crawling though. It asks you to do that as you're reading. It's weird. <laughs> um, but no, like seriously, thing. Like as a kid growing up, I played a lot of JRPGs, a lot of RPGs in general, right? Um, and a lot of them, would you believe, end up with you attacking and dethroning God? Yes. Not necessarily in that order. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Can you believe it? Can you believe it? Hey, is there a fantasy pope? I bet he's bad. <laughs> yep. Not that turtle pope, though. That turtle tur tur pope. Tur tur turtle pope's fine. Yeah, he's turtle's tur always good. I mean, mm -hmm. yes, Elden Ring is technically an RPG, and there's technically a pope in that game, and that pope is totally fine because he's a turtle. But it's yeah. because he's a turtle, or a dog. not because he's right. a pope. Or right. is he a dog? He's a good dog. He's a good dog. Okay. Yeah. Anyways. Okay. I ended up getting a very worthless degree because of how much I enjoyed the philosophy and religion 101 <laughs> that these games were offering up. Preach it, brother. At such a young age. Where it's like, no, listen. Hey. Um, no, I, 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 were your educational aspirations determined by Xenogears? Oh no! I can either. I'm pleading the fifth on that oh, one. No. I need to talk to my lawyer about that. <laughs> no, if it had um, been Zeno Gears, you never would have finished your degree. <laughs> I didn't. I mean, I finished the bachelor. I didn't finish my. my oh, bachelor. it was Zeno Gears. So <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. You didn't get past the second disc. Yeah. I, listen. <laughs> I just. Me, how could me, a game? Me and, me and Wake Forest. How <laughs> could a game rip off Evangelion so much that it? also doesn't end like it's incredible it's just it's truly but no like i i that game imprinted on me like i was asking my parents for like philosophy books because of some of these games and like oh, years what a nerd i know <laughs> here i am <laughs> i turned out yeah but like the point is like I, that game was like hugely influential on mm -hmm. me um in a way that like few games 
were because it just sort of like stuck with me. And yeah, it's got its problems. I get it, right? I get it. <laughs> so we're being very mean to you. Would you like no. to kill God in a giant robot in an actual full video game? I would. Here's the thing: if given the option, wouldn't say no. Okay. Yeah, we're we're being very mean no, to you. No, you're fine. But you can be mean. Like, obviously, listen, something that doesn't end, you want a sequel to, right? Like, Zen- yeah. Zen- Zen- years. Here's the thing: like, and yes, I I dabbled in Xenosaga, which was. I'd, hey, that's one good game out of three. Yeah. Then you get Xenoblade Chronicles, which, hey, you get two good games out of three, and one that you forget right in the middle because it's... So, like, he keeps trying to do it, and I respect that he, they keep trying to make it happen. <laughs> but, like, I, I would love to have the chance to go back to that world, those characters, you know, and, like, listen, man spout your ridiculous rhetoric Get, hey you want to talk about ideologies for 30 hours yes yes i do <laughs> i would love Let's to go. see i would really love to see him and kojima just get a bunch of cocaine and write a video game together i think that would be a lot of fun to play i mean yeah but like yeah, even even okay even re- like moving away from from the story aspects of it like i really enjoyed that combat system it was different. Yes. It was something different than what you saw from a lot of like RPGs at the time, right? Most stuff coming out of Japan was attack, magic, special thing, item, right? Your classic Final Fantasy stuff, you know, Dragon Quest, whatnot. And, oh yeah, that's <laughs> one of the things about Xenogears is that when you are allowed to play it, it's actually pretty cool. It, yeah, I mean, like mm-hmm. you're building out your own combos, you're leveling up stuff. You have yeah. your mechs that you can like loosely, I say loosely, customize because there is some like upgrades you can do on that stuff, right? Like heat management, blah blah blah. Like it's, it has, it's got good bones. Mm-hmm. It's got real good bones, and it's doing something different that you didn't see other games doing, right? Like I have a soft spot, much like you have a soft spot for like Zelda Two and like what it was doing and trying to do mechanically. I will generally, if there was an RPG that was a little off kilter, I probably enjoy it because it was doing something like it's like, oh hey, this is like flip in a, a Lundra, where it's like, hey, yeah, this is doing something a little bit different than everything else out there, but we're, like, just trying to push the genre and be like, hey, what can we do and still it be, have it be one of these? Right? I don't want to make yep. too much fun of video games getting into your head philosophically when you're a kid. Yeah. Because you know? lots of things get into your head. It's true. Philosophically when you're a kid. Mm-hmm. And some of them are very silly, and some of them are very bad. And sometimes you watch Fight Club and think it's cool instead of going, oh, my God, this is a this is a cautionary tale. You know, but when when you're like 12, but Mm -hmm. you can also, I think about the scene in Chrono Trigger where they're all sitting around the fire talking about existentialism. Yep. And if you've never been exposed to that idea before, a bunch of your favorite characters near the end of their journey kind of taking a load off and being like, what's this all about anyway? Why do we do all this? You know, for for a kid, that's, you sit there like, huh never thought about that before it opens a door i think that's cool so i don't want to i don't want to yeah, entirely no, like, crap it's, on no Cine listen Gears. i will be the first one to crap on Cine Gears. as a fan that is my right <laughs> to sit there and be like no listen i get it at least it's not sonic and honestly that's what really matters but no, like I mean, I think everybody has a game or a series that they would love to see like come back for mm-hmm. whatever reasons. Like I mean, I have like tons of goofy answers, right? Like, hey Disney, if you're listening, I would love an actual sequel to Marvel vs. Capcom two. If you could let let them make that game, that'd be awesome. Like, like seriously, like I there there are games out there. That I'm like, no, no, I would love an actual sequel to this thing oh right? like marvel versus capcom alpha or something like yeah no listen just just scrap the numbers yeah call it something else but like hey it's a 2d versus fighter and i can be ryu capcom versus marvel i mean sure. <laughs> yeah there it is let's really it's different <laughs> how it's like don't worry about it cvm sounds like something you put in with your resume um i think i went to the the, the weed store and bought some cvm the other day <laughs> But like there's like I said, there's tons of stuff out there that's like you could just start listing off mm-hmm. things, right? Where it's like, hey, yeah, I mean like the, the cool thing is nowadays for a lot of stuff, those things are happening. Like for years I would have said I would have I really wanted a new Monkey Island from like Ron Gilbert and like Tim You Schubert. got one. And I got one. Yeah. I got yeah. one from, I got one, right? Yeah. It's like, hey, I would love to have this game be a thing. Like I mean like 
yeah, like another Baldur's Gate, right? It's like, hey, cool. Yeah. There's, we got one. There's also it's times a, where like you 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 feel that way about something, right? And then you realize like, well, maybe. Maybe it's a miracle I even got the one that I got, right? Because yeah. as soon as you said Marvel vs. Capcom 2, the first thing I'm thinking in my head is, man, I really want a sequel to Killer Instinct. Um, mm-hmm. But we got the reboot. Yeah. It's one of the best fighting games ever made. Maybe I should just be happy I got that. But yeah. it's been 10 years. Yeah. I, yeah. I want another and one. And then you get Reggie doing things like, hey, oh, I'm just at home playing you know, Mother 3 in English, which is one of the great <laughs> yeah. like, troll, troll tweets of all time. And, and I mean, look what happened. We got We got a sequel to Breath of the Wild. Yeah. What more can we ask for in this? And it's better. And it's better. And it's good. It's the best video game ever. Mm. We're going to have to turn this. I have to work. And if we start going down the Tears of the Kingdom rabbit hole, I might kill him. Joe, Joe, we have you scheduled, scheduled to come in for some more episodes. And you've mentioned to me that you want to sit in Mm. on one of them that you're not scheduled for. That I would be happy to to squeeze that in. Oh, what's that? Which what are we gonna? Argue oh, Joe. About? Joe believes he has thoughts on like a game of the year conversation. <laughs> oh, I'm sure Joe does. Oh, of course. Yeah. This this is perhaps the most exciting year to have that conversation. It's been a good year. Uh, it's gonna be in a my entire bath. adult life. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. This one is this is the cornucopia year. It, and it and it should have been just Tears of the Kingdom. Yeah. And we don't need to go too much further into this, but like when you hit that. It's just almost inconceivable that you can get better than that. Yeah. And the fact that there is like what six to ten games that you can look at this year mm-hmm. and be like they're all genre defining, just like yeah. masterpieces. And it's things insane. that are not gonna have a shot at game of the year that are still best in well, series, like Pikmin Four. Like that's Pikmin not game 4, of the yeah. year, but that's the best Pikmin game by a long shot. By a long shot. Right? Yeah. So things like Resident Evil Four remake, I think, yeah. are astounding. Yeah. But like because of what else is around it this year. It's just like, why even talk about this? Yeah, it's really rough. Yeah. Well, that's a preview for yeah. many hey, we weeks gonna, from now. Oh, sorry for interrupting, Eleanor. Please continue. No, that's all no, I had to say. Um, are we going to ask people to tell us their, their, their sequels? Are ask, ask other people? people? Kind of to, are we going to ask them to send them in? Are we going to ask them to send them to us? Hey, this is a cry, a plea, a quest for engagement. Hey, what uh what games do you want to see sequels to that haven't been done in forever ever? Uh, put that in the comments, ping us on the socials, or shoot us an email. What email you say? We'll find out here in the next segment, where we answer some emails. You're gonna make them wait for the next segment. To yeah. Get the email address. Yeah. That's what pretty a, good. What a dick. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Hey Joe. What do you want to plug real quick before you have to head off to actual do real work? Oh, man. what's I don't even know what's going to be available. I'll plug a limited run thing, though. Go for it. Uh, yeah. Plumbers Don't Wear Ties, Definitive Edition. It's coming out December 8th. I don't know when you're going to hear this. It's coming out digitally. December 8th or is it Digitally, December, December 8th. The pre-order, the physical pre-orders will have ended. Right, right, right. Yeah. But, but yep. the game will live on, and we want yep. it to be you know, successful. Yeah, we, want, gonna, we put a lot of hard work into this. It's forever. Like, honestly, like, I, moment of sincerity. Joe and his team and everyone involved in in that definitive edition, like we truly we, we poured way more of our hearts into that than it deserved, it the, the, and yes. um, got so much love that it didn't deserve. Yep, yeah. and I would uh, I would genuinely appreciate people checking that out. Yep. Whether have, that is checking out the game or checking out reviews, just check the game out, please. I believe your team has done something that's never been done in games. You have made the best version of the worst game. That was literally our our. You know our our kind of motivation. I don't think anyone just in ever one thing. It was like, no, we wanted to make it the best Pula. remaster of the worst game. Yeah, it is a ridiculous. So. And you package. did it. You did a really good we job. Did, that. We like did something. It's, it's it is it is <laughs> at the very least, it sure is a thing. It's we we. <laughs> um, it is one of the video games of all time. It's a Jeremy, video game. Has Jeremy showed you the strategy guide yet? I have it in my <laughs> inbox, and I'm going to be looking at it this afternoon. Oh, so. Honestly, folks, so like that, just. It's a whole thing. Yeah, it's, it's a, whole a whole thing. thing. So, uh, play but plumbers. It is, it, it, especially if you've only um, just kind of heard about the game before. Mm-hmm. Play the game. Uh, it's different than you think it is. Mm-hmm. So if, if you only know it from YouTube, if you only know it from AVGN, the game's actually different than you think it is. So. No matter what you imagine, it's worse. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's it's a it's a video game. It is a video game. And with that, Joe, thank you so much. Thank for, you for, for thank here you for, for getting me. Episode. Thank you for getting me away from work for a little bit. Hey. Yeah. Uh, now you I have gotta to go, go back. Yeah, I gotta go back to Daddy Josh um, and that, LaBelle. You, you know, I was gonna make a joke. <laughs> that was a little too gimpsy right there. What I do you mean? Yeah. What do you like mean? <laughs> <laughs> no, listen. Um, go back to go back to go back to the office. Mm-hmm. Tell tell Josh we said hi. We'll be there 
later. Shortly. Shortly. Or maybe just you better mention be. we're still filming. Me? I have stuff to do here. Well, you have stuff to do there, too. I do. Have, oh, I do have stuff to do there. You're right. He's right. I will also be at the office shortly. Mm. <laughs> Anyways, mm. thank you, Joe. Thank you. And I'm going to hey, leave. Uh, hey, Eleanor, do that thing where you make the transition happen. Star wipe. Oh, that's good. And welcome back, everybody, to our Q&A segment. I know you're wondering, John, weren't you just over there? You you're... stole my chair. No, I didn't. I realized I like this one better. <laughs> Look at that. Look at that. It has nothing to do with the fact that I broke the chair and that you're sitting in it because my fat ass might break it again. Listen, I'm in this chair now, and now I can look directly to the people. Okay, and I can yeah. look directly at Nathan. Chair turtle. Here's broke. the thing. If you look, my eyebrow goes up for the judgy, and now it's more obviously judgy. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah, see? That's what... It's, this podcast is, you know, work in progress. It's a work in progress. We're sorry we ever did this. I'm not. I am definitely Speaking not. of things I'm that sorry. I'm not sorry about, you can be not sorry about something like sending us a question that we can read on air. That's it. Podcast at limitedrungames.com. Podcast at limitedrungames.com. I enunciate so there is no confusion when you're listening and or watching. No feedback? Excellent. No feedback. <laughs> Thank you. I we were just no it notes. Up no, I just, I just figured you. you were going to keep talking. You know? No, listen, it's, that is the job. Yeah, uh, it is. I'm was I supposed to, to I... make fun of you for being weird? Yeah, like. No, I just listen. I just I figured there would be some snide remark about. No, on we're this just... show. John, we're so used to you being the way you are. Yeah, if we made fun of you every time you were weird, like honestly, we would not get through with this podcast. I was born this way. I was made different. Um, built different. Built different. Constructed built... alternatively. Yes. No, listen. I God nerfed me because I'd be too powerful otherwise. That's right. <laughs> All right. First. I know that feeling. <laughs> <laughs> what was that? What's that? He's just like turning into like Scooby-Doo oh or something. Oh, my God. What's our first yeah, what's viewer our first question? question? Uh, we have, I normally would have uh, some cards here, but I didn't write them up, so I can't do the bit. So just imagine I'm holding something, and then I throw it out like it's a late night TV show gag. Theodore. Theodore from Intercourse, Pennsylvania. It's a real place. And a real thing you can do. In Pennsylvania. And elsewhere. Google the place. Safe search on. <laughs> Anyways. Oh my God. Seriously. Well, I mean, does any porn site really use, like, Intercourse? I guess, you know. Has I'm, not, ever, I'm, not ever, I'm not answering this. I'm not answering this. Has no. anybody hey, ever going hey, to porn and Anyways, the question <laughs> is... <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna get letters. We're gonna get letters. We, and Theodore wanted to know. Theodore, mm, Theodore wanted to know. We are running an Ocean's Eleven style bank heist. Oh hell yeah! That's right. I like bank heists. Not that I do them. Yeah. Legally speaking. Uh, but he wants to know uh, if we could pick any uh, character, excluding. Agent Forty Seven, which we all know would be easy mode. <laughs> okay. Fair. Okay. Yeah. Uh, we each get to pick one person to be on our team. So it's like Ocean's 8, except, you know. Uh, four? Well, there's four, and we get to each pick one. Okay. Uh, yes. We can okay, also okay. be involved. We're so like massive. Okay. Why of those four movies did you choose Ocean's 8? Because there's four of us, then we each are picking one. So it's just eight total. Scheme. One, two, three, four, five. Jeez, right on the spot. Um, Man, no, this is tough. I, I feel like I'm going to steal this from Eleanor, but, like, why wouldn't you want Gex on this team? That that actually was my answer. I was going to make a oh, whole wow. joke about how you probably all expect me to pick Solid Snake, but it's actually going to be Gex, but you could have Gex. No, but I mean it makes sense. You you need to infiltrate, <laughs> you need you need an agent. You can't pick Agent 47. He might be a little loud, but like if we're there, aren't we going okay. to be loud too? I guess we He's need to let's, let's let's ground rules. Just just let's, let's establish something. Is this a world where a talking human-sized gecko it's is going to be an issue? It's the world where it is a video, video game character. character. Well, yes, you but have I created just... a Toontown situation okay. where we That's live in a world where video games That's what I was wanting to confirm, like that we're in a Toontown scenario. Yeah. A TTS, if you will. Yeah. <laughs> so, Gex. I think Gex, Gex would be great. Valid answer. That's what I was making sure of. Okay. I just want to make sure. Okay. Let's just want to so, make sure. You know, you know, if we are doing agents, if it has to be human... 
can you go cheap and just say, oh, James Bond, because Gold Knight, can you do that? Like, is that allowed? He's a video game character. That's what I'm saying. Like, technically. I mean, at least Gex looks like a gecko. I don't know. Pe- like, digitized Pierce well, Brosnan I mean, looks real bad in Gold Knight. But why would, you, <laughs> why would you choose James Bond when, because it's video games, you can choose James Bond? I mean. Oh, that's a good point. Oh, that's, an excellent that's a good point. one. You can, you can even f- pick Herlock Holmes. Yeah. Oh, there we go. He's an idiot. Yeah. No. Yeah. You obviously haven't played well, that game. <laughs> well, okay, honestly, no. Rather, rather have like for really getting down to it, like Clavier Gavin, you know, like maybe something like that, but not for heist. Anyway, heist. Those are lawyers. <laughs> well, Those are lawyers. They can help. Gex. Well, can... When we all get caught, we're gonna need one. Gex. So, yes. Gex can stick on the ceiling. That's a very You're useful right. skill to have. Okay. That was my reason I, for choosing Gex. I but Eleanor. I'm choosing Solid Snake I now. Oh, there we go. That's thank you, thank you. A reasonable. I mean. But I do like the idea of bringing James Pond along. With <laughs> yeah. No, I get it. I love James Pond. I get it. It's a great take. Every I tell John to hold all the James Pond copies. This is true. For me yeah. See, at okay. The retail do store. we like, have James Pond copies? Oh, I bought James Pond at. The I have another. I think I have another. Podcast. Wait, did we make James Pond? We no. didn't. No, we didn't make. No. No, I mean, did we cool? like to distribute one? Like, no. No, I bought used oh, copies. Oh, you just bought used James Pond. You can buy used retro copies of James Pond. Like, like, did we bring back James Pond and no one told me? Like, hey, if we brought own... back James Pond, I would not shut up about it. Britain would not hey, shut hey Josh, up about it. Hey, Josh, it. bring back James Pond. That's all we're saying. Yep. That's all we're saying. If That's you want saying. James Pond, you should at Limited Run Josh. <laughs> you should? You should. <laughs> <laughs> Just do it. Please do. Please. We Scoop are not for responsible you. for anyone brigading Josh with James Pond requests. Anyways. <laughs> Solid Snake, pretty... Uh, pretty you know obvious why i would choose solid snake it's because yeah. he's gorgeous i i mean yes okay. also good in the sneaking and he's good at sneaking but see i think snake needs a handler is the thing i'm the handler oh you're oh you're playing oh, the role of yeah handler. okay okay i'm i'm the handler okay. i'm i'm gonna be the otacon on this team sick okay well, see, that's what i was gonna ask Look, who's the guy in the chair that's I'm the guy in the chair. Eleanor's right. the guy in the chair. So it's like, yeah, I was wondering if someone would actually pick a chair. Because I'm Jared? out of shape. I'm not going to be very well, useful outside the chair. I think we've got, we've got enough sneaky That's people. You know, yeah. we've got, we got, we got Snark. we got Snark mm-hmm. with Gex. Mm-hmm. And we've, me. Huh? And me. And you. Yeah. And you. Both of you together. Yeah. And we've got our super spy. Yeah. I think we need a utility option. Sure. So I'm going to go with video gaming's most powerful character, uh, Milo from Super Scribble Knots. Oh. Absolutely. Who yes. has the power to summon anything? Wow. Uh, I think and done. control it, huh? I think we're done. I think you did it. That's Milo, it. he could. He, he's a good Swiss Army knife. Milo's not especially sneaky, no. but he has the ability to summon things that are. Um, well, I mean, all you have to do is just put a landmine and drop it next to every single person. That's how you solve puzzles in that game. And scribble knots. Yeah, that does help a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's that's. I want Milo on the team. Um, I mean, I'm torn because I feel like like okay. Actually, no, I'm not. I've, I've talked myself back into it. Okay. We need we need a heavy. We need someone in case things go bad. Okay. Right? We need we need someone. So Milo the heavy. We God. need the heavy. No, right. we don't so need I... the heavy. No, no, no. We need a heavy. Someone who has a lot of weapons. Right? Someone who can carry tons of stuff. Right? Okay. okay. I think I think we need Ratchet. Oh, oh yeah. That's okay. great. Yeah. yeah. Ratchet, like right. Ratchet, like, He's I don't know. I don't know where he carries all those guns, but he has all of them. Mm-hmm. In fact... I think in a getaway scenario where we would need those guns, having the disco ball be super useful, making everybody dance so we can get away safely. I mean, he's a he's a utility knife of a Lombax, and yep. I think that is. Uh, I think so. We have a talking gecko, a alien, a sneaky man, and a child and with all the powers of God. <laughs> yeah, a child with all the powers. Franklin, like, goddamn Richards. <laughs> are, are you really going to do Ratchet without Clank though? You only need to pick one. It, like, is it not a package deal? No, he's one. You, get, one. That, um, you ever play Ratchet lonely, Deadlock? That might be I mean, no, no, I, I know. I know there are games where they're yeah. separated, but like... We get to pick one. I don't know. We get you to get pick one. one. Honorable what, mention. Is, what, is, what does Clank do? He floats. It's pretty helpful. I'm so <laughs> tempted to say Bernard from Maniac Mansion. But wow. Well, see, I mean, now, now Eleanor's got me thinking about the, the spy from Team Fortress 2, though. Like, that would be helpful to have a power. I mean, if you want to go that route, like, I'll pick Guybrush Threepwood, because that man, like, once again... Has everything in his pants. He does have everything in his pants. But, he, we got, but we've already got Milo. We it's don't true. Really it's true. Yeah. And like, I mean, yeah. Guybrush. Here's the thing. Guybrush fails his way upward. Yeah. He always succeeds in all of his games. You know. So like, even if stuff goes bad, if we have Guybrush, that means like karmically, we have a lock. Like we're gonna, okay. we're going to win. Okay. He's a win button. My best. The best thing about Milo and Super Scribble Knots is that you can use adjectives too. So you can't just summon. <laughs> 
You can't just summon God. Like you can summon God, such but then you God. can summon you can summon colossal God. Yes. <laughs> like, God, such sweet. the writer's yeah. answer. It's like my words are my power. Yeah. <laughs> or you can just put the word dead in front of. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll just Good appear stuff. dead instantly. Yeah. It's great. Time oh, machine. God. That's yeah. it. You can reduce it. You so you have a time machine. You yeah. can uh, like basically anything like that. A teleporter. Yeah. Oh, the teleporter only takes you to the to the old fifth cell offices, mm-hmm. doesn't it? Um, in yeah, in super, I think that's what it does. Yeah, but there, yeah. there mm-hmm. are. Or the time machine takes you to eight different places. Right, it takes mm-hmm. you all over the place. Yeah, yeah. But that's what I'm saying. Like you can, if you need to go to the fifth cell office. God, those yeah. first you can do it. those first two games were so good, and then mm-hmm. it went off the rails. Yeah. We're just not going to discuss those other ones. Yeah. I think we made a good team. I think we have an 84 percent chance of. Yeah. Honestly, I think those four don't need us at all. No. No, but we're listening. I mean, we're just giving them, like, emotional support. But I'm here, in Ocean's I'm here 11, to what does save Danny the game. Do? Danny is there just to be beat up and then walk away. Well, no, Danny's yeah. a and I'm, head coach. Exactly. And that's what, I, that's what I'm here for. I'm here to sit there and be like, guys, you do great. I'll get the shit kicked out of me. And then walk out and be like, we got it, right? We you got call, it. We got you it. call me on the codec to save your game. <laughs> and I you. give you a fact about a film. Oh, thank you. There we go. Man, I, I don't know what I do then. Jared, what do you do? What's that? I, like, I have to toss because I can't, I can't figure out what my role well, is. Well, you said you were chatting it up with guests. Well, yeah, no, that is fair. You're both walking in and being like, just, hello just there. We're the distraction. I'll bring snacks. <laughs> yeah. You're the driver in the van. We have yeah, the yeah, driver in the van. Driver. Yeah, but, oh, you know. You're in the van with Ratchet. Man, like man, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> driver San Francisco. That's wait, a good one. That's a, we didn't think about the driver. Driver from Driver's Hand. I mean, that's a that's really a, good. Pick. I mean, Jared can drive. I bet you Gex can drive. I don't want Gex to drive. Ratchet drives spaceships. I assume he can Ratchet probably drive. Ratchet is short. He can. Are you saying he can't touch the pedals? I don't think so. <laughs> I'm not going to Wikipedia Ratchet's height because that's going to lead to like it's a bunch gonna, of weird. Maybe you have like him. an Indiana Jones in the Temple of Doom situation, <laughs> like with uh, like the bricks like down below his feet. Yes. Oh my god. Yeah. <sighs> this requires a lot of planning. I'm going to tap my card again. Imagine we have another question. We're moving on. I abs- I'll we're done. We're that. done. We're done. Ratchet's tall enough. Um, Ashley from Paris, Maine. It's a place. Google it. Does it have an Eiffel Tower? I don't know. Maybe. I haven't okay. been there. Eiffel we Lighthouse. Steal. It's Maine. <laughs> <laughs> What's the question, John? Please. Oh, my Lobster. God. What's... They, uh, they Ashley asks, them, limited run has somehow become the keepers of the FMP game. <laughs> Oh, God. And in honor of plumbers don't wear ties. Thank you so much, Ashley. Appreciate that. Plug, it wasn't even ours. Um, wants to know, what is our favorite FMV game? Oh, Lord. If you were to pick one. Oh. Oh, God. I've got an answer to this. What is it? Uh, it's Her Story, because it's actually good. Oh, Her Story That's is incredible. Fair. Yeah. It's a great game. Um, Her Story is actually a really good FMV game. It uses the format to an advantage. Instead of just doing what's obvious and, and making little you know, remote controlled movies that we've gotten mm-hmm. used to. Her story uses the video format in a very metatextual way. You are literally watching video clips of something from real life and they add up together to help you solve a mystery. It's excellent. If you've never played it, I mean it, any of any long. of Barlow's games are are really good. Yeah, and her story is um, my favorite of those. I, I was gonna say like literally uh I was torn between Immortality, which is his most recent one. That's what I was thinking. Immortality yeah. is incredible. And I, I told him to get it right. I think, I think it's this. But does this mean anything to you? It's Contradiction. Contradiction, spot the lie. No? no. Not familiar with Detective Jinx? Anyone? No. Not. No. Seriously? No. Hey, people? People. Go, go, like, Giant Bomb did, like, a really good Let's Play of it. Like, go watch Contradiction. It's great. Is and it th- actually great? No, it's actually great. It's a really good detective game. Okay, I game. thought it was like, is this like Wirehead I mean, I mean, I mean no, the whole shtick like... is it's trying to lean into the goofiness of FMV games. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But it's actually a pretty decent like little mystery game. Okay. But yeah, you're just, uh, you're Detective Jinx, and there there's like a ha- secret hand signal, and you can just, you get a clip of him asking everybody, does this mean anything to you? Does this mean anything? And it just makes me laugh every single time. It's good. It's a good game. Contradiction. Immortality uh, is a game that lives in my head rent-free. Like, you should play that game. That game's incredible. I won't even go into what it's no, right. actually about because, like, you should just figure that out. Like, seriously, it's one of the few games where I'm like, no, the less you know, the better. Um, but no, if you want a game that I will absolutely just be like, hey, it's a detective mystery game, and then you gotta solve it, and it's really goofy and weird. Contradiction. Spot there the liar. Go. All right. Eleanor. We'll get that. It's Night Trap. God. Don't... I, I, I know. I don't know why you guys <sighs> would think anything of, uh, different because I love Schlock. I just, I love it. Do you it. like Night Trap more than Sewer Shark? Because they're both up there in like the 
the credity credity i like night trap because it caused a Cruddy fucking congressional panic that. yeah that 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 the, like the, the it's the cultural implications are huge the, yes the, that and that's academically what, it's important so so that's what i like about it honestly i i love history yeah and I love stupid history. And I love stupid political history. It's, that was exactly so, what my answer was going to be. It's Night Trap because of the stupid political It was, like, it, it went before Congress. So but I also do love that it's fucking stupid. So y'all, y'all you want to know this then, like, you're going to love this. You can go to C-SPAN's website and watch yeah. all of those hearings still. They're oh, I've watched them. Amazing. I've seen them. Yeah. Well, and, and I love see, it. The thing about like the whole government video games evil thing, it culminated in one of my favorite things ever, which is Bill Clinton holding up an ad for Guilty Year, which says, <laughs> kill your friends guilt free. <laughs> it's one of my favorite things ever. I have it printed out on my desk. Oh, that's beautiful. Work. Like, it's incredible. I love Guilty Year. Everyone knows this. But it's, it's just one of those things where the government sees something that they don't understand and they're like, so a bad guy, gotta be evil. Mm -hmm. Gotta be evil. <gasps> well, I, I, I am telling you right now. Heaven or hell, <laughs> engage. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Slash, right? Slash. But, but no, um, the Sorry. immortality, good good shout, good game. Um, but the, the other thing I was thinking about when it came to Night Trap, stuff like that, this is really silly, but I wish, it, this is not a company plug, I swear, I wish that the LRG3 we did with Mega64, like, I wish that was an FMV game, like a real one that you could play. Like, I think there are so many weird things, like when we go back to genres that just don't really exist anymore. Y yes, you can make things like uh, Immortality, things like games mm -hmm. like that where they're better than they were before, they're actually useful in a way, like as far as the gameplay is married with the story and the mechanics and all that. But also, I think there's something to be said for, again, not trying to plug all this stuff, but like RZ, where you go back to a format that people thought was pretty terrible at the time, and you actually find something interesting about it and mm -hmm. make something that could be really cool. So with indie development being the way it is, maybe we'll see something like an older FMV game, which I'm sure there are some out there that I'm just not remembering. But you know, something weird like that. I think it's Wirehead, uh, if I'm remembering the name right. Mm -hmm. If if you love the schlocky ones and you haven't played that, you're like harvester. You're you're an ordinary like house dad, except that your brain is wired with a remote control. What? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And yeah. the player has control of the remote control, and evil spies are coming to kill you. Well, of course they are. And it goes places you can't imagine. It's actually it's actually uh, heavily. The inspiration for the Gerard Butler movie Gamer. <laughs> Jeez. No? 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 Okay. <sighs> that title scares me. Bum, 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 bum. It's where a kid controls Gerard Butler because it's, yeah. it's, it's a hell future. Man, this all is right. The future gamers want. This is all right. Thank you so much. And we're sorry. For watching unlimited runtime episode one. There we go. I'm we did it. We, we did it. it. We made Holy a podcast. Shit. Holy. I was going to curse exceptionally loud. Anyways, guys, thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you stick around. We're dropping another episode this weekend. What? Another I know. Episode. I know. You get two. You it's get a twofer. But if we were to find any of us on this panel. Where would we go, John? I haven't even gotten there yet. We find us in this room <laughs> recording this podcast yeah. right now. Oh, sure. Man, Look, you just... All right, there's a... I'm breaking the flow, we do. We never but do. it <sighs> felt like it was going off air, so I had no! to take control. Look at that. No. Nathan seized, seized the reins. He's, he right. did it. You I'm dropped the reins, John, here. and Nathan picked him up, all right? Otherwise... He took my old chair. The carriage would have gone <laughs> off the you track. You took Nathan, my chair. The Nathan. chariot would have crashed. People on the tape. Nathan, where can people find you if you want to be found? <laughs> if I want to be found, you can find me at Twitter, unfortunately. Uh, at Fridrocity, F-R-Y-D-R-O-C-I-T-Y. Look it up. And you can also go to Blue Sky and find me there, too. Wet fries. Got it. You can find me at Eleanor. That's E-L-E-A-N-R-R-R. -R -R. Hey, yeah, tra trails off there. I am currently working on a uh, draft of a book for press run this month. Oh. <gasps> and I will be sharing my process progress i don't know you can watch me struggle though there'll be stuff and it will be very very funny for you where anywhere Eleanor. 
Eleanor. Okay, you're posting it there. You're posting it there. You're posting your struggle. You're posting through. I'm it. posting the struggle. Okay. I'm not. I'm not posting okay. the draft. You won't be able okay. to read it until. See, you I didn't know. It. I didn't know what you were. Like, no, you know, just me crying. Like, are you just are you streaming you writing. I actually, at the might computer? stream me writing. Uh, that's, but, that's a new way to do accountability, honestly. But I will mostly just be uh, crying okay. and shit posting. You, yeah. you just you just have the monitor up. It doesn't show you the words you're writing. It's just the word count and nothing else. Yeah. It's just like oh. It just words. says. It just says on the page responsibility you're just like oh. <laughs> yeah jared you're yeah. on the internet i am on the internet where can I am, find you on the internet i'm not on twitter which has become a rancid shit stain but uh i it's am it's my rancid on, shit stain though. but i Gross. Uh, <laughs> i am on uh so it's twitter <laughs> <Ain't that>. uh, <laughs> i am on uh threads instagram <laughs> blue sky all the rest of those petty comma jared and uh, uh that's what i do it's a grammar joke do you get it do you, hey Wow. Hey, you. I you understand. Right Do you? Because it's like a name. I'm a writer. I know Anyways, what commas uh, are. Good for you. <laughs> I did it. I like the Oxford comma. Comma? Comma. comma. Oh, that's another thing. Like, yeah, that's a limited run standard. We're, we're Oxford I do agree, comma. We I do have agree. an Oxford comma standard, except uh, on social media posts. Hashtag yeah. bring back the intero bang. Uh, you can find me at hey it's john on blue sky and co-host uh where i post through it like a lunatic and i tell myself i'm gonna start doing microblogs, uh, but i haven't yet but if i tell it into a camera uh maybe that means i will um i, I think right now i just posted about some clone wars stuff why, because, why would that mean that why because i the people will be like john i can't believe you haven't written yet assuming we have like do you viewership. really think they care N- wow. no maybe i don't know okay i'm not here to judge people's interests okay just checking Maybe I have like there's like one individual who's like I'm gonna troll John like every just day. with this one yeah. specific thing. every day every day until it you will, release it. It will bring that one person joy. Yeah, yeah. it's like j- this is like this is my winds of winter. John, have you started like microblogging? <laughs> no, no. How long are these microblogs? <laughs> Listen, the micro like that's what makes it so sad. Is I've not done it. Like 300 words, 400 words. Who knows? But I've not done it yet. But I'm thinking about it. I've thought of a lot about it. I'll put a I'll put a sample of John. a microblog that I've written. John, I, I oh, know God. this. I know. Thinking about it is not doing it. Listen, Stephen King said the way you get better at writing is just writing. You just got to do it. You just yeah. got to do it. Yes. yes. And right now, what I'm saying is, thank you for watching Unlimited Runtime Episode 1. We appreciate your patronage. Please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, as they say on the interwebs. Uh, no, seriously, though, that stuff really helps. If you give us a review on your podcatcher of choice, that would be dope also because I've been told by my superiors that that's how the stuff gets, th- the line goes up. Number go, line up. go up. Line go up. Line go yeah. up. So if you want line to go up, please go ahead and give us a five-star review. I'm not here to tell you that we deserve it, but I'm pretty sure we do. So that uh, whether being, whether we deserve it or not, um, we did those reviews do help us continue making the show. I mean, being, uh, yes, they're thank an you. enormous <laughs> factor in our success. Uh, if you choose to review us and review us well, uh, yeah. we get to keep doing this. So please do; it would be quite helpful, and we'd yeah. appreciate it. Or you could just close the window. Jared being ultra sincere at the end, which we all appreciate, because. I my problem is I just don't sound sincere even when I am. You're very sincere. You're, I, oh, you're a deeply sincere person. See, I know that, but I don't sound it though. See, but he undermines it with his facetiousness. No, I don't. What? Anyways, thank you so much. Y'all have been great. I assume we haven't seen you, but I'm gonna assume that you've all been fantastic listeners. Remember, tune in next week to Unlimited Runtime, the only podcast part of the Limited Numbered Collection, and the only podcast brave enough to ask the questions. Where's the rest of the Super Smash family? I've only ever seen the brothers. 